Often there are people whose lives clearly reflect the times that they are living in. Dr. David Boder was one of those people. He is primarily known for doing the very first recordings of Holocaust survivors in 1946. His life was one of struggle and embracing change in the face of hardship. And his story was nearly lost to history. This is Dr. Boder's story. On November 9, 1886, David Boder was born Aaron Mendel Mickelson to Betty and Burl Mickelson, a Jewish family living in Latvia in an area known as Courland. Because of where he grew up, Boder grew up speaking Latvian, Yiddish, German, and Russian while at school. After his graduation from the Jewish Teachers Institute in Vilna in 1904, Boder pursued a career in psychology that would mark the remainder of his life. He studied with Wilhelm Wundt in Germany and Vladimir Bekhterev in Russia. The title of his talk tonight is No Land, No Sand, Dr. David P. Boder. Through three marriages, the First World War, and with the start of the Russian Civil War, Boder eventually relocated to the United States. He earned a Ph.D. at Northwestern University in 1934 and joined the faculty and helped to start the psychology department at the Lewis Institute. He also opened the first Museum of Psychology in 1937, which lasted for some 20 years. In 1940, the Lewis Institute underwent a major change and merged with the Armour Institute to form the Illinois Institute of Technology. The Armour Institute, incidentally, was one of the leading research institutions looking at magnetic media. This included portable wire recorders. These would become key tools to Boder and his work. Hanover, near Paris, September the 13, 1946. With the outbreak of World War II, Boder did what he could for the war effort. He wrote an article called Nazi Sciences, which took aim at scientists who had begun embracing the Nazi ideology and letting it guide their work. He understood very well that this was a war of ideas as much as it was a war between nations. Boder also wrote the IIT Morse Code Training Forms, a method of learning by anticipated recognition. His biggest contribution to the memory of the war would come in 1946, when he began his work interviewing Holocaust survivors across Europe. Boder's idea was that recorded conversations and language usage could be used to create a scientific measure of trauma. Aware of the horrors of the Holocaust and the massive numbers of displaced peoples, Boder saw an opportunity to put his ideas into practice. He left for Europe in 1946. From July through October, he traveled across Germany, France, Italy, and Switzerland, collecting stories and songs from people who had been in a multitude of ghettos, concentration, and forced labor camps. Though most of those interviewed were Jewish, he also interviewed members of other religious and ethnic groups that the Nazis rounded up. Boder recorded not just their memories of the Holocaust, but also folk, religious, and resistance songs, stories from before the war, and stories about people's families. The interviews ranged from 20 minutes to an hour, and there would sometimes be five or more done a day, leading to the collection of dozens of hours of interviews. Upon returning to the United States, Dr. Boder began the laborious task of transcribing the interviews. Boder's next step was to analyze and contextualize these interviews. Born out of this work was a book entitled I Did Not Interview the Dead, which was published initially in 1949 and included only eight interviews and Boder's analysis of them. After the publication, Boder received a grant from the National Institute of Health which allowed him to process the interviews full-time, a task that would take years. While the work was certainly held up as being important, and more volumes were put out in 1953, 1955, 1956, and 1957, the subsequent volumes were self-published and not reviewed. Over the years, Boder's work fell largely into obscurity. I did take one run down to the river and looked at the dike, and it was about four or five feet down below the dike, and then just all of a sudden, up it came. In November 1949, Boder's health began deteriorating, but he maintained his teaching, research, and clinical practice. 
His work on displaced peoples continued in 1951, when a massive flood hit Kansas City. Over a half million people were displaced by the waters, and Boder took this as another opportunity to study trauma. As he did in Europe in 1946, he interviewed people from all walks of life, different religions, ethnicities, races, and classes. His health problems continued, and in 1952, he moved to California to be closer to his daughter and her family. He obtained a position at UCLA and continued his work on trauma. In 1957, the funding for the processing ran out, and he moved on from his 11-year-long project. The last few years of his life were quiet, and Boder died on December 18, 1961, after suffering a heart attack. The hundreds of hours of audio recordings on wire spools had their own life after Boder's death, being lost, forgotten, and ultimately rediscovered decades later in an archival Indiana Jones-style tale of lost artifacts. The spools being rediscovered at various institutions across the United States helped to bring Boder's work back into the public, and in doing so, brought back voices and stories of people long since drowned out in the historical record. But that story is for another day. Unser Lager trägt im Namen Brandebe, unser Name ist so stolz wie der Wald.